Mihir Vora, Director and Chief Investment Officer at Max Life Insurance is joining us on the show right now. Mihir, thanks very much and good morning to you. Let's start off uh, with the earnings season since we're in the midst of it. Most of the larger names have come out. Uh, the IT earnings from the large cap space did not disappoint. Some of the larger private sector banks have not disappointed. Do you see that this earnings may actually you know, turn the corner stone for us and we could actually see some amount of better earnings coming? In and which could trigger re-rating for some of the stocks. Uh, good morning. Well, I think uh, the better quality results are coming in a bit earlier. Uh, we haven't st still seen the results of the commodity and energy complex uh, linked companies. So to that extent, I reserve my you know judgment on whether the earnings season has gone well. Uh, overall, I would say that the market earnings growth that was expected for FY19 at the beginning of the year have have started ga getting tapered down. So the trend that we have seen over the last four or five years where we start with a 20% growth expectation and end up with a low single digit number uh, is likely to continue. Though this year it may not be a low single digit number, it may be a high single digit number. But definitely not the 15 to 18% growth that we were expecting or hoping uh, with a 7.5% GDP growth rate for the market as a whole. I think in this, in this uh, second half of FY19, the disappointments probably will come from the uh, commodity and energy link complex because we have seen oil and other commodity metals etc prices coming down at this point uh, keeping in mind various other factors affecting equity markets not just domestically but globally as well would it be prudent to probably just sit on the sidelines for a bit and get more clarity let the volatility run out, run its course ahead of elections and then make fresh investments or take another approach where you uh, play the markets via defensives and those low beta names uh, and hold on to your high beta investments for those multi-baggers a little bit later on in the year. It should be a stock by stock approach, uh, frankly. Uh, while we have a lot of polarization in the market, so the expensive stocks which are liked by everyone continue to be uh, very expensive and probably getting more expensive as the Nifty uh, nears about 11,000. But we also have a huge amount of uh, beaten down stocks in, the, in, the, in that same market where probably value is already beginning to emerge. So my guess is uh, it's not even a question of sector or or you know large cap small cap approach. It's I think uh, approach that uh, uh, you know should be taken as a stock by stock uh, approach. And I think there is enough alpha to be made uh, and enough absolute returns to be made if you get the stocks right at these levels. Mihir, good morning, Nita Jair. Uh, you know Sun Pharma over the la I'm not asking for a stock specific comment by the way. But I know you can't talk stocks, but Sun Pharma over the last two or three days after being beaten down has taken a bit of a damage control measure. They've uh, tried to do a few things. You would probably be aware of the news. My question to you is, uh, how would the institutional community view any stock or any company of this nature? Index company, pedigree company, has enjoyed pedigree status for a really long time, got involved in something, and is now trying to do damage control. Uh, do the, does the valuation derating that has happened uh, stay, or do you believe the turnaround, even the valuation re-rating happens very quickly? So it's a function of what the market believes the future will be uh, in all these cases. And as long as there are no serious issues with the you know, accounting or the reported numbers, etc., and it's only a question of uh, certain uh, you know, subjective calls which were probably taken, uh, I think the market can look past in the, in the, in the next few uh, you know, quarters, uh, as long as there are no fundamental issues with the, uh, with the reported numbers, etc. Okay. You mentioned the energy space and waiting for those results to come out. The one number that did come out uh, seemed reasonably okay, not just on the telecom side, but also on the energy business side. But uh, I, want to, I want to refer to the telecom business, therefore, Mir. Uh, what happens here? It's a space, uh, I mean, it's a large enough pocket now not to ignore at the same time. Say for Reliance, the other two are caught in a state of flux with the pricing pressures. Uh, in your portfolios, do you look to uh, add or keep telecom at all, or is it a shun sector for the time being? Uh, for us, it's been an avoid sector for quite some time, and we don't see the competitive pressures uh, going away in a hurry. 
I think it's a it's a sector where probably you will be left with two or three players, and that's where we are already heading to. Uh, but in the next one year or so, I don't see the competitive intensity really going away. Uh, capex requirements will continue to grow up. There will be uh, in the future requirements for spectrum bidding, also uh, rebidding, etc. So I think the the you know the overall situation where you have a lot of investments to be done and competitive intensity not going away, that will remain for the next couple of years. So it is still a sector which which we are avoiding. Okay, Meer, uh, the <coughs> behavior of uh, companies in the CV space seems to suggest that the market, at least for now, believes that the pain is not over <coughs> and is probably undecided about where in the cycle are we. Where do you think we are? We've had three good years of a CV up cycle. Are we at the stage of the down cycle or is it difficult to call right now? So the way we are seeing GST collections, it de de definitely appears to be some kind of a slowdown. Uh, we are already seeing slowdown in certain key numbers like uh, rail freight, uh, cement sales, uh, passenger and two-wheeler sales, etc. So the, we are seeing some signs of a uh, overall economic slowdown for sure. And CV tends to be an even higher beta play, probably with a little bit of a lag on such uh, such cyclical movement. So I think uh, uh, on the CV space, we'd rather begin to see the improvement in numbers before we take a, a, a positive call. So as of now, since the numbers are still not coming in, we are underweight the sector. And non-CV autos, uh, what's the call there? I mean, be it two-wheelers, be it four-wheelers? Uh, well, that's a space where we are really not happy in the sense uh, We've been overweight. We had been overweight on this segment for like almost you know two to three years continuously, and uh, made a lot of money, uh, a lot of outperformance because of that. Uh, but we are kind of sad that uh, the numbers have started slowing down sharply. And this is a segment where we do believe that you know that is the future of India because uh, cars, especially, are not that well penetrated, and there's a long uh, you know penetration story there uh, to go. But if, even if even if that segment is not showing signs of growth, it means that there is a genuine consumer slowdown. So we have gone underweight in the sector, but it's with a lot, with a, it's a, I would say with a heavy heart. All right. Uh, what is the strategy that you're adopting me here right now? I mean, while there are different approaches that people take to investing in a market like this, what is your strategy? So being a long only fund, the mandate is of course to generate uh, our performance uh, uh, versus the benchmark. So there we are. Looking at uh, our core philosophy, with it, which is uh, growth at a reasonable price. So wherever we are seeing that growth is maintained or, or accelerating, uh, we are looking into those segments. So IT is one segment that we have been overweight now almost for 12 months. Uh, after being underweight the previous two to three years, uh, we shifted our stance to overweight uh, because of a couple of things. One is that the currency was, was weakening, so that was a tailwind for the sector. And the US economy especially was doing quite well. So we changed our stance from underweight to overweight, uh, and we are maintaining that stance. Reasonable valuations are still there uh, because of the you know kind of growth that we are seeing and the good quality of uh, cash flows, etc. In this segment, so IT is one segment uh, we continue to uh, be overweight on. I think and we shall be. Uh, the other thing that we have been uh, shifting, uh, have shifted uh, in the early part of the year, and which we are likely to maintain is underweight on NBFCs. Uh, a, there are two kinds of NBSs, one which are expensive and still growing, uh, but we don't like them because of valuations, and the other ones which are not growing because of the uh, ALM uh, issues. So in, in both the cases, we have very limited exposure to NBFCs, almost, uh, almost negligible. So we continue to play with the private sector banks, and within the private sector banks, earlier we were overweight completely on the more retail and SME kind of segments. But now even on the corporate banks, uh, we do see signs of uh, uh, growth coming back. And uh, moreover, corporate banks in general compared to the retail banks had been cheaper. So to that extent, uh, that's a change in stance. We are going overweight on the co corporate banks also. Mm. Would you, uh, you know, consider uh, looking at a possibility of real estate picking up flavor? I mean, in terms of, uh, it's, it's obviously a small space. You have no large cap real estate player as such. It's, it's more a play on the mid cap size. But uh, would that be something that would interest you now? I mean, at least from the names that have a stronger balance sheet. Sure. Uh, in real estate, in general, what we are seeing is that uh, the Bangalore uh, uh, oriented players are doing better. 
so we have some very limited exposure but only in the uh, in that in that in that pocket uh, apart from that uh, the ncr and bombay markets continue to be quite sluggish uh, and a lot of the players out there are still uh, leveraged etc so to that extent uh, it's a story that uh, should reflect the growth of india but as of now there's not much to do there okay um mehir uh, just my final question really as we uh, as i hear you and please correct me if i'm wrong but i get a feeling that you you believe or maybe uh, i get a feeling that uh, your your assumption or your belief must be that the markets are likely to show a hint of weakness as opposed to becoming strong over the larger part of the year is that a correct assumption uh yes so uh, our estimates for fy19 and fy20 in terms of gdp yeah. growth are lower than the consensus estimates we don't believe that we are on a trajectory of 7.5% gdp growth uh, growth rate even for fy20 so to that extent uh, our expectations are lower than the market and uh, by that logic yes the markets are little bit on the expensive side uh, so we would be cautious on equities would your eps estimate be on the nifty for fy20 Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? Your EPS estimate for a FI20, Nifty EPS estimate. So we're expecting about fifteen uh, percent growth uh, on FI20 versus uh, FI19. All right, got that. Whereas the consensus would be closer to say twenty twenty-two percent, twenty twenty-two percent. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard uh, even till twenty-four percent, but that is primarily because of uh, you know a few heavy yeah. weights, a few large caps within the index, which have skewed the EPS earnings on the higher side. But Meher Bora, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so very much for joining in. Appreciate you taking out the time this morning.